Well, hello, my friends. I am back. Like I ever left. <laughs> Came home yesterday, spent a good part of the day over here. Did this little fantastic turning with a super finish on it. Edited the video with Tom. Uh, when he came over, cut up some blanks. Today I've been playing with the camera so I could get this camera set up to be wireless, which it is. I got a piece of bottle brush and bottle brush to me it's exciting it's even exciting to the fact that I still have any left because this thing checked like crazy I had lost just about all of it but yet out of the slab I was able to get some pieces out of it like that piece right to there so why wouldn't this be exciting when that's the characteristics you get out of bottle brush just beautiful beautiful wood grain nice reddish very deep red like cherry and the grain is really super tight on this that's why it produces such a beautiful finish on the piece Speed, eh, I can guess that I'm gonna start this off around four or five hundred RPMs at the tops. A lot of stuff is going to fly off this. So let's see what we got. Start it off real slow and speed it up accordingly. 360 RPM. So before, before I really put a heavy, before I put a serious commitment on this, I'm going to try to get this point cylinder and not take a lot from the top in case I want to keep that as a wide mouth or in case it looks good as a wide mouth face. So what I want to do, 
to show off this edging of the burl bark what everything that's going on around this edge is I'm going to tape it up and mix up some epoxy five minute epoxy to uh, fill up some of these voids now hopefully it will do what I want it to do this is probably not my best system so I'm gonna come up with something a little bit different from this that's going to contour this now we'll see Okay, this little piece of probably walnut veneer will probably do me a little bit better because it won't kink in. Just gotta get it started. It won't kink in and it will maintain its shape. A piece of plastic would have done the same, guaranteed. The only difference is using this veneer, it will maintain its shape, cup shape, and fill up where I need it and not anywhere else. And I got equal amounts on both halves. So this is a five minute epoxy, which does not give me much time to work with it. So it's basically Mix it and get it done. And I think I'm going to be using a green. And because I don't have a real green, I have blue and yellow. And I will mix up about the same proportions of blue and yellow and then put it all together. This is diamond dust. You can get this on Amazon. That's where I got it from. So I'll mix it up in one of the mixtures first.
this might not be enough to fill this up. I will focus on the outside edges. bigger cup would have been nice but like I've said many many times on my videos I work with whatever I got at hand I usually don't come from the house set up to do something uh, specific I knew I was going to finish this up uh, or try to finish up this piece but the idea of the resin was something that just came about as I or the epoxy as I got in here So I got the green on the bottom and I'm going to put this blue on the top and if I needed to do any more I'd probably use another color on the top of it. Now I know this is not going to blend in because it's too thick and it's quick drying. If this was a slow drying uh, epoxy it would probably give me a nice swirl effect if I wanted it. So this uh, epoxy has been here for uh, about 24 hours and I put a piece of wood just to build me a, a platform an edge to maintain my uh, resin inside of course that's all gonna be chewed away and turned so it's nothing to stay here so I'm going to take it from back here and lightly reshape it getting rid of this piece right here and exposing all the uh, the epoxy on this outside edge
I use Minwax clear brushing lacquer, semi gloss, clear semi gloss. I'll be back in about 20 minutes for this lacquer to dry up. Okay, this has had two coats of lacquer. Uh, first coat, let it dry for about 30 minutes and sanded it with fine steel wool. Just lightly sanding it. Then applied another coat. It's dried, it's been dry for another 20 minutes or so. The second coat was a little bit lighter. And again, light sanding it with steel wool. Now the finish that's here is already an acceptable finish. Just as is. No high gloss, no nothing. The inside just has the two coats of lacquer. So far this piece has not taken any OP Shine juice. Just the sanding up to the fine steel wool, Yorkshire grit, then uh, the lacquer, two coats, light sanding in between the coats with uh, the steel wool, and now after the steel wool, I'm applying Yorkshire grit. Now 
Yorkshire grit is not any type of a finish. It's a, it's a sanding aid. So I'm not looking for a polished look with this, but it will get rid of all the fine hairline cracks, uh, I'm sorry, scratches that you have. I'm not going to be doing this all the time or going this step with the Yorkshire microfine abrasive. Unless I have a piece that I really am emphasizing on finishes. Or that I want that extra luster. And generally, the finish I get with the OB Shine Juice, for me, is an acceptable finish so I don't generally go this route but if you are looking for that extra little step that extra little shine uh, this is a, a great product for that the shine that I will achieve with this will be shine juice I would not be able to get with just the Yorkshire Grit and the OB Shine Juice by itself. Although, I like the finish that I get with it. I, like I said, I don't generally look for this high luster. Well, let's see what, I, what we get. Now also the reflection looks different depending on where I put this overhead light. And uh, the last thing I did, the ultimate shine, I kind of moved the light halfway and not realizing that it had made such a big effect. Um, it kind of just refined the, uh, the luster a little bit more precise rather than a wide appearance. It actually showed the reflection of the light bulb. So already this is a really, really fine looking polish. And because I can't get out here to get the same look, I'm going to power buff. See what this does for me. I'm going to use a wool buffing wheel and see if I can uh, get this outside edge a little bit more. Going there. 
all be shine juice and uh, give it the final finish. I decided to just wipe down the uh, lacquer uh, a little bit get rid of that little punch that it has from the uh, just being lacquer itself uh, it's a different type of a shine and it will get rid of any bubbling from the lacquer and anything like that and and I think that, uh, you know, it's something that I prefer over that, like I said, that super high gloss. I, I don't know what it is about me, but, uh, you know, I really, really am not a person that am after the uh, things that are this shiny. I, it's nice to be able to achieve, but it's not the thing that I... I look for in a piece. So in the inside I'm kind of just dulling it down. just to uh, remove the foot over here and whenever I come up with something different uh, like a deep vase like this uh, something of that sort that is not my standard bowl the little foam disc that I have somewhere which I don't see right now but does a nice job in most cases to centering uh, things out but on the case like that, I'm going to have to rely on reaching all the way down, making sure that the, the wings, going to make sure that the wings don't hit the headstock. So I'll pad that up a little bit with a couple of pieces of paper towel just to uh, give it a little bit of a cushion and that will be fine to, uh, to work the rest of this.
and it's always centered because you're going to the cone of the uh, the piece don't apply a lot of pressure you just need enough to uh, hold you in place start cutting with your regular gouge whatever you like your favorite tool and then at the end turn to the uh, into a skew Well, not a moment too soon, two weeks that this was started, two weeks ago, and uh, I think well worth it. The wood in itself, which is a uh, bottle brush, is an amazing wood all by itself. The finish, a little glossier than what I particularly shoot for when I'm doing wood turning but it should be refined because the the acrylic uh, acrylic two part epoxy with the diamond dust but you can use any type of a, a colored dust in it the two colors made up which was the blue and yellow that I had uh, the cobalt blue and the yellow to make this aqua color the green and then I used the cobalt blue pure by itself in other areas as the top coat I think I think it came out pretty well the the whole piece inside uh, can never get the shine to show up there we go it goes all the way down it's got a nice nice taper the face is a little bit heavy at the bottom uh, as you can see I got this flared out foot but the inside does not flare out it just goes into a round cone on the bottom there we go so uh, but the the wood grain that goes true I mean that was the whole thing why I was so excited about this uh, it does have a little bit of burl with it uh, mix uh, but it was just a top edge so it wouldn't be considered a burl but regardless of what it is and regardless of all these nice grains that are in here that's an added bonus but the whole face looks good I love the fact that I kept this little piece over here uh, that every little bit that you can put 
or that you can save out of the natural the natural edging of the wood that you got the better off you are because then you come up with little charms like this just I well, hope you like it don't forget if you like it share it with your friends There we are. Rebel Tiger. Rebel Tiger signing out with a wrong cap. Well, Glenn, thanks for the hat. But it's supposed to say Rebel Turner somewhere in there. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you very soon.